Good evening, everybody. Just wait a couple of minutes for other people to join. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Julian. How are you? Good. Yes. Thanks. Jax, hopefully you can see us as well as hear us. It'd be great if I could see you as well. I'd be able to give you feedback, but as long as you can see what we're doing in copy, that will be a good start. We'll get started in just a moment. Okay, let's go guys. Ta-da. Come here. Take one. Raise your right hand and recite the tenets. She jump. Courtesy. Integrity. Perseverance. Self-control. Indomitable spirit. And recite the oath. She jump. I shall observe the tenets of Taekwondo. I shall respect the instructor and seniors. I shall never misuse Taekwondo. I shall be a champion of freedom and justice. I shall build a more peaceful world. Bottle. Okay, rotating your wrists. Oh, actually, before we do that, come and sit down. I had a plan. Over the last couple of sessions, I've had a little discussion on the tenets. So on Monday, we had a little chat about courtesy. On yesterday, we had a little chat about integrity. And today, we're going to have a little chat about perseverance. So unmute yourselves and tell me what perseverance is. Julian. Show some respect to other people. Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts? Robin? Or Jax? Anyone else? You've got another thought, Julian? Where you go? Um... I um, say please and thank you. Okay, this, these are things about courtesy. We want, we're looking at perseverance. So what perseverance is, is when you find something hard, you keep trying your best. Okay, it's like there's an old saying, if at first you don't succeed, try again. And that's what perseverance is. Okay. So if you find something difficult, you keep trying. Because the more we practice something, the better we get at it. And so that's what perseverance is all about. Things like Taekwondo, your schoolwork, 
uh, or if you're learning a musical instrument, all of these things are quite hard to do and you don't become awesome at them just by watching and doing them once. You've got to try these things again and again and again to get better at them. And then ultimately you'll, you'll get the skills that you're looking for. And Taekwondo is no exception to this. It's also really important at school. Okay, so if you find a subject hard at school, if you find maths or creative writing or something like that difficult, you just keep practicing it. And that's what school's all about. It's about learning new skills and practicing those skills to get better. Okay, so perseverance is a super, super important tenet. Okay, so it's about setting a goal and goal setting can help a lot with perseverance. If we decide what we want to achieve and we break it down into our little tasks of how we get there, and then that we can try harder every one of those tasks. So you might, you should, for example, in your training notebook, you should have written down what your Taekwondo goal is for this year. Maybe it's to get your yellow belt or your green stripe or something like that, Robin. Okay, so at each of your gradings, you should think, okay, what do I need to get at this next grading? What am I aiming for at my next grading? Think about the skills that you need to develop and set yourself some objectives in that. Maybe you want to improve your sine wave so what does it mean to improve your sine wave? How about getting your kicks right? Maybe there's, there could be something about you want to have a strong side kick. So you think, I want to be able to break a board, a white board with a side kick. That's a good measurable goal. So you know when you've achieved that. And for each of those goals, you want to set yourself a deadline. So you create like a little ladder of goals that helps you to your final goal at the end of the year. So it's a really good thing to do in your notebook. Set yourself the goal that you want to achieve at December this year at that last grading and think about all the things that will help you to get there and the skills you need to develop and write those down as a little ladder and then you can try and achieve each of those goals on the way through. And that's a really awesome tool to help you persevere and achieve your goals. Your ultimate goal might be to get your black belt or maybe your fourth degree black belt. Think about the little steps that you need to attain to get to that level. Okay, now let's do some physical training. Standing up. Rotating your wrists. Change direction. Elbows. Change direction. Arms back. Forward. And then twisting your torso. Put your hands on your hips and just rotate one of your ankles. When you're writing down your goals, and it is important to write your goals down, not just to say them, change direction. You want to make sure you write them really clearly. And in your goal, you want to make sure that you can achieve it. It's, it's got to be something that's realistic that you can do. And you've got to set yourself a time frame for when you're going to achieve the goal. Change foot. And you've got to write it in such a way that you know when you've achieved it. Okay, so it's not a waffly goal like I'm going to have better sine wave. That's too waffly. You want to know exactly when you're going to achieve it. If you want to work on your jumping, you might say, I want to jump 60 centimeters in the air and I'll change foot. Uh, sorry, change direction. And I want to do that by the end of term one. Okay, that might be your goal. So you know when you, your deadline is to achieve it. And you know, you can measure that height. You can set an obstacle at 60 centimeters and just measure whether you can jump that high. Okay, hands on knees. Going down and back. Down and back. Down and back. And circling outwards. Oh, we had a good workout session last night in the big kids class. My legs are a bit sore. It's awesome. And 
in words. Good hips. Wonder where the rest of our Wednesday class is. Most of them are missing. Change direction. Okay, now just keep your hands up by your brain. All I want you to do is go front kick with one leg and then front kick with the other leg. Just warming your legs up. Up, Chagi. Where you go. Nice and gently. Now we're going behind ourselves like this. This is actually called a back snap kick. Notice I've got to kick a little bit behind my bottom, not straight up like this. I'm going a little bit back behind my bottom. Okay, now facing the front again. Now we're gonna go side to side and do like a low side kick, except we don't have to worry about turning this other foot. This is actually called a side pressing kick, but it looks just, this, just like a side kick, except we don't pivot our other foot. So we go. There you go. Just get your nice stamping motion. Make sure you're lifting your knee up. And stamp, lift, stamp, lift, stamp. Look where you're kicking. Okay, now find the little space on the wall or get a chair. I'm going to get a chair. If you have access to a chair, that's pretty awesome. Just something like this, that's good. That's awesome, Ro uh, Robin, that's cool. Yeah, Julian, that's all you need. Good stuff. Put one hand on the chair, other one up guarding your brain, and just do your front rising kicks. Do 12 each leg. Good stuff. Keep that leg straight. Okay, now I'm going to put both hands on the chair. I'm going to do two slightly different stretches here. The first one, I'm going to keep both feet pointing to the chair and then just open my legs out. And it won't go very high, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to try and turn my hips or anything. Just keep my hips nice and straight. Keep both feet forward and just gently lift my leg as much as I can. After we've done this one, we'll do our side rising kick. First, we'll just loosen the knees up. Good. Okay. 
Now we're going to do our side rising kick. So this is the one where we turn our supporting foot the same direction as the chair. And I lean my body a little bit. And really lift my leg up. There you go. When we get back in the dodging, I want you all to show me your written goals, your goal written down in your training notebook. Okay, what are you going to achieve this year? Okay, good. And now we'll just have both of our feet pointing towards the chair and we'll go back. Back rising kick, just nice and gently. Drop each leg. Okay, we've got white belts and yellow stripes in this class today. So we're gonna go through all the required techniques for white belts and yellow stripes. Yes, Julian, that's a special type of white belt. You're a white belt with first red. So we're gonna go through all the stuff you need to know and also all the stuff that Robin needs to know. Okay, now next one. Both hands on your chair, lift your leg up and we're gonna do turning kick. So out, in out in so it's a flicking motion where you go 12 of those each leg lift your knee nice and high just watch that ankle position julian you want to make sure that your foot when you kick is slightly downward not sticking up okay downward a little bit Watch that ankle position. 12 each leg. Keep that knee up, Robin. Don't let that knee fall down. You gotta lift it up. Lift your knee. And then go out and back, out and back, out and back. Keep that knee up. Good, Julian. Just watch your foot position, Julian. Lift that knee, lift it up, lift it up. The height of your knee dictates the height of your kick. So it shouldn't be down by the other knee, it should be up by your hips. Up, 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 up. Lift the knee. Robin looking. Lift your knee up, Robin, like this. Look in the camera. Lift your knee up. Not down like this, doing this. It'll lift the knee up. Build your strength. Sit, Julian. Okay. That's better. Pull those toes back so you're kicking with the ball of the foot. Put your foot and toes back. You want this foot position. Good. That's it. Okay. Watching the screen for the next one. 
So what we did that time was a turning kick motion. So it was flicking the knee in and out this way. Now we're gonna do a side kick motion, which is your stamp. So it's pulling the knee back, stamping out and back this way. Still gotta keep my knee and foot up nice and high. I still put my hands on my chair, pivot my supporting foot, lift my knee up and out and back 12 times. Way you go. It should feel like stamping, not like flicking. So Julian, you have to bring your knee back to your chest and then step out, bring it back to your chest and step out. That's better, stamping, good. Try and lift your body up as much as you can, Robin. You should feel tight around your hip because you're working those muscles hard. That's it, try to stamp, don't flick, that's it. Lift it up. So you're pulling that foot back so you can kick with your foot sword. Kick with your foot sword, not with your toes. Pull the foot back so you hit with the edge of the foot, this edge of your foot. It's called your foot sword. If your toes pointing forward, you're gonna hit with your toes. You wanna hit with the foot sword. So pull your toes out of the way and stamp with the edge of your foot beside your heel. Good. And come on. Okay, put your chairs away, grab a little drink, go. Pull those toes out of the way, Robin. So you can move that foot sword, not with your toes. Kick with the right part of the foot. Good boy, Robin. Okay, pop that chair away when you're done. Grab a little drink. Okay, so what we're gonna work on today is we're gonna go through all the basic movements that we need to know Four direction punch, four direction block, and chonji. And I'm hoping we'll get some time to do three step sparring for yellow stripe as well. Okay, and that's actually most of the white belt and yellow stripe syllabuses. Yep, good boy, you've got those stripes on Julian, that's excellent. It's good stuff, looks cool, looks very cool. Well done. Keep training the way you are, and it's possible that you could be going, you'll be going for your yellow strike very soon. Okay, let's go. Next bit. Now, we did some work in Monday's class on our sine wave and how we move. If you didn't do Monday's class, then you can see that on our website under our doje area. These are our classes for this week and you can watch that video because it's on YouTube. From here though, what we're gonna do first up is we're gonna go straight to the basic movements of four direction punch. So with our right side first, we're gonna step back into our low block, making sure we're crossing on top and then step forward and do our punch, making sure our shoulders are straight. Remembering that spring of the knees, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. So you just keep doing that. Watch that walking stance. Make sure your heel remains on the floor. 
as you step, glide your foot across the floor. Don't lift it too high and stamp. Don't go too fast. Check that your crossing is correct for your block. Make sure that stance is nice and long, Julian. Sometimes it's a little bit short. It's a good long stance. And come on. Okay, let's do the other side. Go. Remember that foot glides halfway into the other foot and then steps out again. Good, strong walking stances. Make sure when you cross for your low block, the backs of your hands are together like you're smashing two watches. That way, both of your hands will twist when you block. You want to twist both of your hands to add to your acceleration and then develop more power. Come on, good. Okay, so four direction punch has the walking stance low block and the walking stance four plus middle punch. Now four direction block, as you know, has knife hand low block and in a forearm middle block. Now knife hand low block crosses on top, on top and both of your hands twist, just smashing two watches together. And actually, for technical stuff, the forearm low block crosses in front of the chest the knife and low block crosses a little bit further around at the ribs so it can cut across like a knife. Okay. And then your inner forearm middle block crosses underneath with both hands facing away from you. Still crossing in front of your opposite chest. And then you pull across. When you do this block, don't lift your elbows up. Keep your elbows down. <laughs> this way. Okay. So from our parallel stance, we're going to go knife and low block. Inner forearm middle block. Where you go, knife and low block. Inner forearm middle block. Correcting your crossing and your stances. Make sure that knife hand stops just inside your leg, about 10 centimeters away from it, 15 centimeters for adults, but let's think a little bit less for you guys because you're shorter. Okay, knife and low block. Make sure your wrist is always straight, Robin, in your low block. Make sure that your wrist isn't bent like this. Keep it straight. Julian, when you do your blocks, make sure they stop in line with your badge. Don't block outside your body like this. That's the boy. Good. And keep it shoulder height. That's excellent. That way you can block the tack and still protect your body. Low block. Middle block, low block, middle block, low block, middle block, low block, middle block. Okay, let's do the other side. Get ready. Right side. Go. Low block with your knife hand. Middle block, low block, middle block, low block, middle block. Low block, middle block, low block, middle block. Just watch the height of that low block, Robin. It's a bit high. Someone's trying to kick you in the lower abdomen. If your hand's up there, you'll get kicked. So drop it down lower. So you're blocking that lower abdomen. A little bit lower, Robin. That's better. Watch those walking stances, Julian. Make sure you keep those train tracks going. Both feet facing forwards.
Good, and come on. Okay, so they're the fundamental, fundamental movements for Saju Jiddiki. Oh, sorry, Saju Maki. So we've done Saju Jiddiki, we've done Saju Maki. The first half of Chonji, as you know, Robin, has also low block punch. Okay, the second half, though, it has your inner forearm middle block and your L stance. And then your four fist middle punch and walking stance. So we're going to go from here, we'll do the right side first. We're going to go L stance block, middle block, and then we'll do punch. L stance block and punch cross underneath. So when you step back, Julian, you're in an L stance this time. So your feet are making an L shape. Your body is now on an angle for this block and you're blocking your shoulder height here. Then when I step forward, I do my walking stance. So when I step back, my back foot does point sideways now. This is an L stance. So at the moment, Julian, you're a little bit forward like this. I want you more sideways like this. It's the same block we do, as uh, same stance we use as when we do the guarding block. Okay, so let's go, punch. L stance, punch and walking stance, L stance block, punch and walking stance, L stance block. So Robin, what I want you thinking about when you do your L stance is that your front toe and your back heel are on the same line this way. That gives you about two and a half centimeters between your heels because of the natural angle of your feet. Make sure your back foot doesn't point backwards at all, it points sideways. Okay, tiny, tiny bit forward, but mainly sideways. And from here, I've got to put a little bit more weight on my back leg. And then step forward and punch. Keep my body weight up, my body upright. Let's go. So notice how I'm quite side on with this L stance. I'm not exactly side on, but I'm quite angled. That means my opponent's only got a little bitty place to attack as opposed to when I've got full facing, all this area can be attacked. In my L stance, it's quite a small area. Okay, let's do the other side. Left leg, block, punch, 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 block, punch. Remember that sine wave? Spring your knee. The one that's not moving springs up and down to create, create a sine wave. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. Hamburg. Okay. Now, if we've got our sine wave right when we're doing those movements, down, up, down. Down, up, down. The next bit is going to be a lot easier. So listen, Robin and your and Chong Ji, we've got backward step turn clockwise. So if I start my walking stance with my punch. I've got to turn all the way around following this arm. And do my block. And then punch. Turn all the way around, block. And punch. Turn all the way around, block. And punch. Notice when I'm doing that, I'm moving away from the camera. The reason that I'm moving away, hope you so you can see my feet. Here, this foot, is on my train tracks in front of me. In fact, I'll face the camera so you can see this. These are my train tracks here. But when I turn around, this back leg here is going to be the new train track for this side. And this leg is going to move over there like this. So if I keep doing that, I'm going to run into my shelf. OK, so make sure when you're turning, you maintain your train tracks. Leave room for your hips. So we're gonna do that from here, from your parallel stance punch. 
Then we'll turn, do low block, forward and punch. Turn, low block, forward and punch. Make sure when you turn, you dip your body weight down. And as you're facing the other direction, that's when I rise up and cross. And then block and punch, following my arm. My body weight is down. This is the down part of my sine wave. Then when I get to this, to this angle, I rise up and block. Okay, so watch this way for a minute, both of you, because this is quite tricky and very important. So watch this way. Turn around and watch. Julian, watch. Okay, from here, here's my stance. My sine wave, I go down. Now I'm already facing the other way on an angle. This is when I rise up for my sine wave. Up, down, and check your train tracks are correct before you go any further, and then punch down up as i turn the other way drop down and punch check my trial block check my train tracks then punch so that's how i want you to do it okay you might need to adjust your position a lot because you'll be moving in one direction all the time from here one two three and punch one two three check my stance then punch one two three check my stance then punch. And then we're going to shuffle back again. Go. So you're practicing your backward step turns. So Julian, you should be moving back towards the couch when you do this, towards that couch behind you. Because from here, when I turn, I'm moving across this way. Then I turn again and I'm moving this way. I turn again, I hit the wall. So I've got to chart start again. Make sense how that happens? Does it make sense? Is it where my back foot is? Then when I turn, my walking stance train tracks are here now. They used to be here, but they're moving over here when I turn around. Okay, keep practicing that. So we've got low block punch. Here. Oh, show me where I was. There we go. Low block punch. Check your stance when you do the low block. And punch. Low block. Punch. Low block. Punch. Takes a lot of practice to do that with good balance. Well, Julian. Watching for a moment. When you turn, you turn towards the, the punching arm. So I'm turning towards my arm. If I'm punching this way, I'm turning towards my arm. Okay, go. So Robin, so we're working on that backward step two. And come on. Okay, watch this way. Now, Robin, this is something else that you need to know for your grade is about spot turning and step turning. There are two, fund two different types of spot turn and each of them have two different types. So when we spot turn, it basically means we're not moving forward or backward, okay? So if I just pivot on my front foot, that's called a spot turn pivoting on the front foot. Pretty easy, isn't it? If I instead pivot on my back foot, that's called a spot turn pivoting on the back foot. Really easy. Notice that when I do these turns, my body weight, my foot just comes halfway in, curls around and turns the other way. Okay, so I'll do that so you can see it. If I'm doing a, a spot turn pivoting on the front foot, halfway in, turn around and do my stance. Notice that when I do that, I move sideways just like you did when you did this, the backward step two, okay? That's the first type. The second type is when we put our front foot or our rear foot onto the center line. So on this type, this is also called a spot turn, not a step turn, it's a spot turn. I move my front foot into the middle of it, and then I turn around. Move my front foot into the middle of it, and then turn around. Or I can move my back foot into the middle of it, and then turn around. 
move my back foot into the middle of it and turn around. This is called a spot turn, moving your front foot on the center line or a spot turn, moving your back foot on the center line. So you've got to know this, Robin. Okay, then we've got different types of step turn. A step turn is where you go forwards or backwards when you're turning, okay? So if I do a forward step turn, I can do it one of two ways. Who can put your hands up? Everybody put your hands up. One hand in the air. And now turn your hand clockwise. Turn it clockwise. Which way does the clock go? That's it. Good. Now turn it counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay, good. Good that you know that. Excellent. So when I do my step turns, I can either turn my body clockwise or anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. So if I've got my right foot forward and I do a forward step turn clockwise, it looks like this. I go forward, I turn clockwise, and face the other way. Forward step turn clockwise. The backward step turn is what we did in Chong Jing. It's a backward step turn clockwise. I can also turn counterclockwise. So I can go this way to turn. Or if I'm going to go backwards and go counterclockwise, it would be counterclockwise is this way here. Or forward counterclockwise here. Okay, so that's it. I'm either stepping forward or backwards, and I either turn clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so covering the we haven't covered that off. Now from here, we've done our backward step turn clockwise with our punch. Now, Robin, the next one for you is we're going to do our inner forearm middle block, then punch then backward step turn into our L stance and a forearm middle block and then punch then backward step turn into our L stance and a forearm middle block and then punch and keep going where you go so punch in a forearm middle block and L stance punch in a forearm middle block and L stance and punch in a forearm middle block and L stance and punch look at that sine wave down up down and punch, down, up, down, and punch. Check your L stance when you've done it. Make sure that your feet are correct, because that's what makes the difference in Chonji. That's the difference between a good Chonji and a bad Chonji, is stances. And the turning is the hardest bit. Good. From here, down, up and cross, down, and punch. Down and turn, up and cross, block, and punch. That's it, Julian. Correct those stances now, Julian. Make sure you cross and block. And when you do your punch, boom, strong walking stance, train tracks. Feet down, punch out. Go to nice, strong walking stances. And come on. Okay, and come back into the camera. So that is how we take the movements from the patterns that we need to know we take the difficult bits out of it and we just practice the difficult bits. And then we do the pattern. And having practiced the difficult bits, we'll find they're a lot harder. Because as we learn before with perseverance, the more we practice something, the better we get at it. So we practice the hard bits. And then we perform the pattern. Okay? So we perform the pattern in little bits and pieces. Okay, so now, everybody up. Let's do four action punch. We practice our movements. A sign rate should be good. Our stances should be good, and our power and crossing should be good. Right side footer should punch. She jump. Check your stances. Watch the crossing there, Julian. That last low block you crossed around the wrong way. Pull right back to your hip, Robin, and bottle. Now do the other side. The top, one, cross, check your stance. Punch, check your stance when you're turning.
That's it, Julian. Look down after you finish. Don't look down when you step, look down after you step. Pull that right hand back to your hip. Side your fist onto your hip. And butt off. Now we go straight into Sajjum Maki, right side, Shijok. Pull the other hand back to your hip. And bottle. Try to remember the crossing and stuff we did when we just did the two movements. Left side. Zop. Blocking Julian, doing four direction block. There we go. And bottle. Okay, now Julian, I want you to do four direction block again, right side and left side. Robin, you and I are going to do Chonji. Okay, so yellow stripes, those of you that haven't got your cameras on, yellow stripes are doing Chonji. And white belts who have not yet got a yellow stripe, you're doing four direction block, right side and left side. Okay, ready. Remember, if you haven't got enough space to do the pattern, finish a movement, then adjust your position. Don't do shorter stances to make it fit. Do good stances and then move if you need to to do the next position, the next move. Okay, Chonji to Robin. Everyone else, or yellow stripe Chonji. White belts who haven't got yellow stripe yet. Four direction block both sides. She drop. Just like we practice with the turn. Hold that last position. Bottle. Shot. Grab a little drink of water. Okay. So one more thing we're going to work on a little bit today. We've done a lot of the, a bit of this before. We're going to work on three step sparring alone, which Robin is something that you need to be able to do for your next national grading for your yellow belt. Okay, everyone else, it's a good time to learn it. Good skill set. There are three different techniques we're going to do. In all of the three step sparring, we'll do three attacks and then stop. Then we'll do three defenses and one counter attack and then stop. The defense that we do will match the attack we've just done because we're being our own imaginary partner. So give yourself enough room to step forward a bit. You might need to go on an angle because we're going to take three steps forward. But from here, our ready position is our forearm low block and walking stance with a little key up. Hop, go. Right leg back. Put your right leg back, Julian. That's it. Now we're going to step forward and we're going to do three middle punches. My count. Go. Hunt up. Do. Set. And then we step back into our ready position. Okay, so we did a forearm low block with key up. Then we did three punches moving forward. And then we step back back into our ready position. Now the defense, hop, your ready signal on the spot. We're gonna step our right leg back and do just like Sergeant Maki in a forearm middle block. Go, one, right leg back, and two, and three. Now from here, 
on the spot. We're not going to step forward or backward. We're just going to do a little sine wave, extend that blocking hand out a little bit and thrust with a flat fingertip. So it looks very much like a punch. It's eye level, but we're going to open our hand up and stick our fingers in something squishy. So it goes straight like a punch. And when we do that, we kia. Hop! And but all. So that's number one. We'll do number one again. Hop! Go! Right leg back, Julian. That's it. And punching. One. Two. Three. Step back, but all. Hop! We're ready. Right leg goes back first. One. Right leg, Julian. Two. Three. And then on the spot with key up. Pull. Flat fingertip thrust. And step forward, but all. Okay, so that's number one. Number two. This time, instead of doing a middle punch, we're going to do a high punch. And our block this time, we're going to do what's called a knife hand side block. So this crosses on top. Doesn't cross underneath like our middle block. It crosses on top like a knife hand low block. But instead of blocking down here, we're going to block our eye level. That's it, Robin. Good. So we're going to cross and block. Cross and block. Blocks at eye level. So we're blocking with the knife hand, the edge of your hand here. Okay. And then when we counterattack, Julie, I'm sure you remember, we're going to step forward and we're going to use this reverse knife hand. So we're going to tuck our thumb out of the way and we're going to swing that hand in and strike the bad guy in the temple. So it'll look like this. When we do that, we're stepping into a sitting stance, into Anam Sogi. And we're striking in towards ourselves in the middle here. Actually in line with the badge for, a, for an inward strike. Okay, this one. Hands start nice and relaxed. Open out and strike in this way. So let's do number two. From here, the same ready position. Forearm low block. Ha! Go. Right leg back, Julian. Now we're going to do three eye level punches, three high punches. One, two, three, and then step back. Now we give our ready signal. Hop. Crossing on top, bring the right leg back. My left hand's going to cross on top, and I've got to block the high punch, so I do a high block. Okay, then I'm going to do the other side, two. Keep your hands up in between, and then the other side, three. Don't drop your hands down in the middle, Julian. We're going to cross on top for that one. Now from here, my back foot's going to step forward into that sitting stance. And strike with my reverse knife. Hand. This way. Imagine where your opponent is, so you can strike with them. And step back. Let's do number two again. Right leg back, Julian. Okay, three high punches. Go. One, two, three. Muddle. Hop. Hop. Step your right leg back. One, knife hand high block. Knife hand high side block. You've got to bend that arm, Julian. You can't do it with a straight arm or you can't defend. And two. So knife hand side block. Three. And step in. Hop. Hop. And bottle. Okay. Now we'll do number three. Number three, your attack is a low front snap kick. So that's your tummy button height. Okay, that's the attack we're going to do. After we do our low front snap kick, we're going to do a sine wave and land in a walking ready stance. Okay, remember our walking ready stance? When we defend, we're going to use our forearm low block because that's the right block to use for a front kick. And then when we counter attack, from here, we're actually going to move the front foot into an L stance and smash him with a knife and side strike. 
smash across this way, crossing on top. Okay. And then after we've gone into our L stance, we're going to bring our front foot back where it used to be and then come up into our parallel stance again. Okay, so get ready. Right knee back. Hop, go. Oh. Now we're going to do our front snap kick, walking ready stance. Make sure you do a sine wave after you kick to show you've got good balance. Two. Set. And step back, but all. Hop. Right leg back. Low block. We're going to pause a split second here because we're going to give our partner time to do their walking ready stunts. Two. And set. Now pivot the back foot, bring the front foot in. Pah! Knife and side strike. With your left hand, that's it. Now bring that left foot back where it was before we moved it and step back up into our parallel stance. That's number three. Let's do number three again. Pop! No! Front snap kick. Pull. Set. Step back, bottle. Hop. Right leg back. One. Two. Set. Pivot the back foot, step the front foot into L stance. Ha! Ah. My pen side strike. And then return to where you were and shot. So they're the three Robin that you need to know. Okay, there's the middle punch attack, and you counterattack that with your you block it with your inner forearm middle block, counterattack with your thrust. Number two is a high punch. You block it with a knife hand side block. And you counterattack by stepping in and swinging that reverse knife hand inward. Number three, the attack was a front snap kick. You block that with a low forearm low block. And you counterattack by moving that front foot and doing a knife hand side strike. Okay, grab a drink. So today we've been through almost all of the movements that you need to know to get to yellow stripe and to get to yellow belt. What we didn't do is the fundamental movement. So in particular, we haven't done the kicks, okay? And a couple of the hand techniques for yellow stripe. But there's a lot of stuff that we covered today. So after class, make sure you're writing down your notes. Now remember, it's not enough to get your yellow stripe or to get your yellow belt just to know what those movements are. Okay, and to be able to kind of do them. We expect to see you with good stances, with good crossing, with nice power. And that's why we have to persevere and practice again and again and again. So we get good balance, we get strong stances, good power, get our crossing right to help with our power and things, get all the body involved in the movement. Okay. So that's why it's so important to practice hard so we can get up to our next level. Okay, sitting down, what well, we are sitting down, that's good. I'm just gonna adjust my camera. Left leg out, right leg over the top and twist the torso. Breathe deeply. Change legs. Remember for your homework, you're gonna pull out your training notebook and write down your goal for the year. And then write down the things that you need to achieve to get to that goal. So what are the little steps on the way there? Write those down as goals as well. And then you can see how you're going to step your way through to your next grading. Julian, if you're training twice a week and practicing hard, 
you might be in a position to attain your yellow stripe at the end of the year. Robin, you're training twice a week and looking really good. You might be in a position to get your yellow belt at the end of the year. So what do you need to get to get there? Okay. So that might mean, Robin, for you, in the first term this year, you want to get your yellow belt. And then you want to train really hard so that in the second term, you might be able to get two stripes. The third term, you might get another stripe. And then the last term, you might be able to get your, your green stripe. Oh, your green stripe for you at the end of the year. Sorry, not your yellow belt. If you train hard, you might be able to get your yellow belt at the end of this term. Only if you train hard, though. It's a, it's a big ask. Got to be practicing hard. But if it's anything like you were in class last Wednesday when I gave you that certificate with the wrong name on it, sorry. I think you're going to be looking good by the end of the term. Okay, both feet out. Breathe in. And down to the front. Okay, now lie down sideways on the ground like this. Lift your legs up, grab your trousers, and let your legs hang open. And just hold on to your trousers, pull your toes back toward you. Good stretch. And slowly bring the legs in, standing up. Bring your left leg behind. Left leg behind, grab your ankle. Change legs. And give it a little shake and turn to the side and tidy up. Thank you guys for coming. It was really good to see you today. Remember, we've got another class at five o'clock tomorrow. You're welcome to come along to that. And if we're very lucky, fingers crossed, we'll be back in the Dodge Am next week. Otherwise, we'll be back on Zoom with you. Thanks, guys. Ta -da. Keep practicing. Kill me. Take one. What's up? Hi, Sarah. Good night. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Jax.